On today's show, we'll be talking veggies. Our Mad Kitchen Science will explore how many veggies we need and what they do for us. And there'll be an experiment, of course. We also share two veggie-centric recipes, some tips for using leftover veggies, and a little food fancification. Let's get started. All right, today on Mad Kitchen Science, this is all about veggies. Veggies, in case you didn't understand. All right, so today in Mad Kitchen Science, as you've heard, the focus is on veggies. But why veggies, you might ask? They'll they are, I'm going to say, controversial among kids, including me. We don't always like the taste. You know, we prefer candy. I can't speak for everybody, but the, the, the majority will say. But, once more, why veggies? Here's why. This poster that I'm standing next to from ChooseMyPlate.gov here, this shows what, what you need to eat to maintain a healthy diet. Vegetables are the biggest slice in all the stuff. They're bigger than fruits, they're bigger than protein, they're bigger than dairy, and they're just about the size of grains. Dairy is stuff like milk, ice cream. Protein is stuff like meats, fruits, or fruits. And grains are like breads and rice and stuff. But vegetables, they're the biggest part. Vegetables and fruits alone, they're more than half of your diets if you want to maintain a healthy diet. So, yeah, that's why they're important. They're also important because veggies have a lot of nutrients in them. But what are nutrients, you ask? <laughs> like veggies, they're good for you. They help with your health, they help you heal, and, you know, they make you healthy. So, here are some of the nutrients that veggies have in them. First, fiber. You might have heard about this and how you need it. Interesting fact, fiber, you don't absorb it. It goes right through you, down the toilet. But fiber, it also helps with your di digestion. <coughs> Next, potassium. Then if you have a lot of potassium in your diet, it helps you maintain a healthy blood pressure. Vitamin A. Vitamin A, it keeps your skin healthy. And like your eyes, it helps you see better. My mom used to say, eat your corn and veggies, because they make your eyes glow. She, she was right, the vitamin A in them, it helps your eyes. The next thing, vitamin C. You've probably heard of this one, how it's in oranges and all that. But vitamin C, it helps heal, like heal your wounds. It also helps your body fight off diseases when they get inside of you. And of course, there's more. There's too many nutrients to list in this short little show. If you want more information about what, what individual nutrients are in a certain fruit or vegetable, you can go to this website called fruitsandvegetablesmorematters.org. It's a nice little site. It has a database of every fruit, most fruits and vegetables. I don't think you account for ev everyone ever, but they have the database with all the nutrition information on them. So, if you want to know how much protein a guava has, you can go there. But here's the hint: it doesn't have any protein. Well, we know that veggies are good for us, really good for us. So why don't we do an experiment on them, eh? Our experiment today, we're going to be doing it with celery. It's a common experiment, and you might have done it or heard about it. You know, we got our ideas for the observations and the experiment from our favorite experiment book, Science Experiments You Can Eat. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to chop up the celery, and Sophie's going to put some, what color is it, purple? Uh, I think it's, ne it's neon purple. Neon purple food dye into the... Some more beakers filled with just regular tap water there. We're actually doing two experiments today. The first one Alex is preparing for is you're just going to cut like uh, the celery prop so that there's two clean ends on it. And you're going to stick it in the food coloring that Sophie, the coloring water that Sophie mixes. And then cut that in half, Alex, because we're going to use half of it for one of our experiments and half for this one, the other experiment and half for this one. All right. Once Sophie is done mixing up her purple dye, what do we do? Well, looks like Sophie's put more dye in that one, but I'm going to take the spoon out of this. 
And careful, this might get ugly. We're safe. <laughs> so, do you want to put the other one in? All right, now we also need, before we start our observations, we need to cut another piece of celery, but we need to leave all the leaves on it. So find a nice piece, Alex, and cut it about the same length as those other ones, but find one that has a lot of leaves on it. Let's make it leafy. Two of them or just... Just one of them. And then cut it so that the leaf, from the leaf part, it's still on about the same length. There you go. And then that one gets stuck into the water as well. Then we're going to let, we're going to set those aside and let time elapse. Now, due to the magic of video editing, we have a completed experiment. We did this earlier, and we used red dye for it, as you can see. So, let's make some observations, shall we? We'll start with Sophie's. For the first experiment, uh, we used just a plain piece of celery, and we let it suck up the, um the red dye. She is going to peel it and we're going to make some observations. I now peel. The part that she's peeling so we can see is called the xylem, so we can see into the xylem, the xylem of this long hollow cells that form the pipeline of the roots to the leaves. We want to see which parts are darker and which parts are lighter. What are you noticing, so, so is one part darker than the other? Yes. Which part is darker? Well, since this is the way it was in, in it, this part is darker and you can also see right here these tubes. Let me see. Right here. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see that the bottom is darker. Let's see the top part. Right there. Cool. Show us that xylem bottom butt part again. Okay, I'm, I'm not just like, use it, Oops. cut it. Better. Can you see the red dots in there? Yep. Cool. Red dots along. Now let's take next look, now let's take a look at Alex's experiment. And I This is the one with the leaves here. here. For this for the leaf experiment, we want um, to observe which stock the water rose up more quickly? Do you think that the water, the stock with the leaves rose more quickly or the stock without the leaves, Alex? I want to peel back both of them and see what I can look. What do you think before before you observe? What do you think will happen? <clears throat> I think the one with the leaves. The leaves would need more water to keep on being leafy, I guess. And <laughs> so they'd suck the color up faster, you think? I would guess. The one with the leaves, the lines, there are fewer lines, but they appear to be a lot darker. Does it go up all the way to the top, or is it higher? Yeah, some yeah. of them even start halfway to the top. Mm-hmm. Cool. Can you show it? Lift it up and let us see. I don't know how well we'll be able to get a shot of that, but you guys will have to do it at home on your own. Oh, I see. Now show us the one without the... Without them. There's a bunch of lines, but they're duller, and... See, just, and it doesn't go all the way to the top. They start to fade near the top. There's one that goes all the way to the top. Well, that's been. I'll have to say that that those have been in the food coloring for a while. But I did observe earlier that the one with the leaves did seem to get to the top faster. You know what that means? What? Right prediction dance. <laughs> exactly. Now. When you're done with this experiment, guess what you can do with the celery, Alex? You could eat it. But yeah. I'm not that good, big of an eater. You're so. not a big of a celery eater, are you? Yeah. Maybe if it's like hiding under two layers of like peanut butter and chocolate, maybe. <laughs> sometimes when you make dinner, you have leftovers. And sometimes those leftovers are vegetables. Here are five ways you can use your leftover vegetables. Number one, soup. Lots of veggies work for soup. Corn, carrots, peas, beans. Just toss them in with some stock and noodles and you've got a tasty veggie noodle soup. Number two, salads. I love taking leftover steamed green beans, tossing them with a vinaigrette and some feta and some walnuts 
It's a delicious salad. But other veggies are great mixed with lettuce as well, like corn and peas. They're two of my favorite additions. Number three, wraps. As you saw on the show today, we used veggies in our pasta wraps, just taking leftover veggies and tossing them up in a lasagna noodle. But other types of wraps are great too. You can use a soft shell tortilla and wrap in some asparagus, ham, a little Swiss cheese, maybe a little mustard, and you have a delicious sandwich. Be creative. Use whatever veggies you have and toss in some meat and cheese. Great sandwich. Number four, tacos. Traditional American tacos are usually just meat, lettuce, tomatoes, cheese. But if you get a little bit of creative, you can toss in some extras like corn. It's one of our favorites. I also like swapping out baby spinach with the lettuce. Or try Greek tacos with feta, spinach, artichoke hearts, some black olives, and gyro sauce. Mm hmm And number five, good old pasta or rice stirrings. Pretty much any veggie can be tossed in with some pasta or rice, a little butter sauce or a vinaigrette, it makes a great salad or a simple side dish for any meal. And there you have it, five great ways to use your leftover veggies. This is our first recipe. Veggie pasta wraps. Uh uh. Oh yeah. To get started on a recipe, Mom is gonna boil some pasta, then go on to steam the asparagus, the beans, the broccoli we have here, all that veggie stuff, and then get the squash and the zucchinis ready. Let's see here. P.S. Uh uh. All right, the kids are gonna start prepping the veggies for steaming. Let's do it. All right, to prep up the be veggies, first, we're gonna take the green beans and trim all of the heads and the stems off of them on both sides. Then, take the asparagus and trim off a bit of the end closest to the stem. Then, take the big head of broccoli and cut off the individual heads. And then, you have the zucchini and the squash here. Trim the ends off of that and cut them into little, like, half-inch thick slices. Grate some cheese, then put them in the steamer, or boiling for some of the things, and you're done. So this is how we are going to do it, because we did everything, we boiled the noodles, we did all the stuff, everything's ready. And what do we have all out, Alec? Can you tell everybody what we have out? All right. So here we have our marinara sauce. Here we have a like white creamy cheese sauce. Alfredo. Alfredo. Then here we just have some cheese. What kind of it, Mom? That's mozzarella and parmesan. Mozzarella and then parmesan right here. Salt, pepper, Italian you seasoning. You can add some seasoning to it too. Alright. Yes. Works. All right, Sophie, so what do you do? First you take a noodle. Yeah, and you lay it out on some tin foil with the pan and stuff. And then, and you, then so Alex is gonna do his. Mm -hmm. And then you take the vegetables that you want, and I'm going to make the kind that I would like. Alex, so it's not too hot anymore. You can probably use your fingers. Okay. So i got to go. Yeah, the noodles here. can be hot. You can also let them cool. Just make sure you toss them in olive oil so they don't stick. All right. That, put the vegetable that you want on, and you can put a lot on, too, if you want. Vegetables, we have frozen corn, yeah. some cucumbers. Some squash we cut now, up and then. I like corn on this kind of thing. Seasoning. I don't really like those. That's not my favorite. But I could probably do the asparagus though. And but then corn doesn't really work that good. But you don't have to use corn. It's just because I wanted that. Yep. And then corn kind of falls out. Mhm. Mm Sophie, why don't you put a cup? Why don't you put some asparagus in there too? Okay. I'm putting some cheese on mine. And then if you want some seasoning, there's salt and pepper or Italian seasoning. Can sprinkle on it. Yeah, you can do anything like that. You can add stuff. We and also have some green beans in there too if you want to use green beans. Cheese. Bit of musk. So cheese. Bit of parmesan. And do a tiny little pinch of that. Put on some Italian and seasoning too. Though. This is what you do, then you. Ooh! So can you add a little Italian seasoning to mine? We didn't put any Italian seasoning on mine. And Italian then. seasoning. Next to garlic. The best seasoning. Put some on mine first. And put a little bit on there. And then once you have everything in there that you want, you roll it up. 
So show them how you roll it up. So this is how, but first I need to get my sauce oh, in. So likes to put a little bit in the middle. You don't have to put sauce in the middle if you don't want. That's good. And you put it on the outside too, like this, <coughs> of course. Okay. All right, now and finally, on. now here's how you roll it up. So you just roll it like that. Other side. And then wrap her up. Yeah. And then get you can you add more of the sauce that you want. And you can do different sauces too than what we have. I love this cheese sauce. I don't really like that sauce, whatever it's called, I forgot. Marinara. Yeah, that. And then we just Marinara. put some cheese sauce there. You can sprinkle then, parmesan on top if you want. Yep, and you can do the different kinds of cheese that you want on top. Stuff so to add with the wrap because I love that cheese. Just like good here. So, do you want any Italian seasoning on yours? Uh, I put some in the middle. All right, cool. Woo! We're gonna finish these up, and get them baked, and then we're on to some tacos. Now you'll make some tacos. Here, sit down. Green pepper, green onion, green lime, tomatoes. Um, and Monterey Jack cheese, uh, and this is um, a fancy Mexican cheese called queso fresco. Yeah, and lettuce and yummy shrimp. On my side, we have garlic, mayonnaise, corn fro that's frozen, tortillas and taco shells, and black beans. All right, let's do it. Do it. All right, now we're going to prepare the veggies. Sophie is making her dramatic entrance. Yes, I am. So we can get started now. Okay. So. Alex, what are you going to do? I'm going to cut this lettuce here. Gonna I think I'm going to chop it in half first, just to make it easier. You probably won't use a whole I head. love the crunchy sound when you cut vegetables. Like this vegetable, that vegetable. It's so fun to hear that crunchy sound. And Sophie, what are you doing? Alex. I am cutting green pepper. Alright. Alex is just going to slice up about half of that into just little slices. Let all of us eat um, lettuce. Ooh. Meaning only mom pretty much eats the lettuce. <laughs> and Sophie, what are you getting ready? I'm getting ready the green pepper. Awesome. So you took off the little top. Boosh. And you're taking out all the seeds, right? Yeah. i got to cut it in half though. So you can scoop out the seeds. That's probably enough lettuce, Alex. Right. Just set that aside and put that in that and one. And then cut that. Okay, Alex, what's the next thing you're going to get ready? All right, I think I'll cover the tomato next. We're only going to have one tomato here. You can use more if you're like a tomato y fan, but. Ta da! Yummy. I picked a good green pepper. Now, what can I set this? You have to cut it into chunks. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Okay, and Sophie's cutting the green pepper into chunks. Slices or chunks? We want it to be little squares, okay, so? Okay. Chunk. Chunk. Right, now that we have the tomato done, I'm going to go get myself a Let's napkin. See, I put it in with the shrimp. Don't do that, kids. That's wrong. I'm going to grate some cheese. We're using Monterey Jack cheese for our tacos, but you can use whatever your favorite cheese is. And um, like Sophie said, we have queso fresco as well, in case you want some of that cheese. Okay, so is slicing up our green onion. Just so she's using a bigger knife now. For onions, you kind of need a sharp knife, so this isn't a job for a smaller kid that can't use a knife, but Sophie is going to be nine here in a couple days. Yeah. So. Mine's May 15th. My due date was May 19th, and that's my friend Hannah's birthday. And my other friend named Ellen, her birthday is May 23rd. May rolls. I'm done with our cheese. Let's see how much we got. 
Oh. Well. Now, you can never have too much cheese, right? Okay, so we still need you. Do you want Alex to open up the can of beans? I want to try. Okay. Get some up with that. Yeah. don't know how you people can get this like you could. The black beans we have, Alex and Sophie are being keen and we're opening them together. And we're going to just put some of those into a bowl. So we'll rinse them. I've got it. So Alex and Soph, teamwork, opened up the black beans and they're going to get rinsed and no. put in another little bowl for serving. No. All right, Soph's going to finish this up. Then I'm going to show you how to make our garlic lime mayo. Now I'm going to make our garlic lime mayonnaise. It's a good alternative to salsa for tacos. Especially fish tacos. Hell yeah. Salsa on fish. You might like it, but I don't. So, let's get started. First, I have a lime. Cut it in half here. I'm going to squeeze half of it into this bowl. You can squeeze more to taste if you want. Yeah, just some lime juice for flavoring. A little squirt of this one. Then, my mayonnaise. About half a cup of that. And this bowl is roughly a cup, so we're going to fill it half up with mayonnaise. It's a bit more, that's about it. And then, we have one, two cloves of garlic, depending on how garlicky you like it. Personally, we're garlic people. So I'm gonna put two cloves in, but it's your choice. And here's our second clove. Back to put our tacos together. Alright, then once we have all the stuff together, a bit more lime. And it all together. I'm gonna finish stirring this and then I'll bring back soap to finish up the tacos. Time for food transportation. Welcome to food transportation. Ugh. Okay, so if we're going to have a taco party, you would have all the ingredients out like we do. So everything, the shells, all the stuff that you would have in there everything so that's what we have so this is how you do it grab a plate <clears throat> and I prefer hard shells so I'll do that and there is no black olives sadly you could but also have black olives that would be yes, a good addition that's what I like and sour cream I also like but I'll be doing shrimp today so you'd have it all lined up just so your guests can grab right down the line right so yep just like that. Now I'm gonna bring Alex over here so we can finish eating up our tacos. That now that you know how to make your table all beautiful and pretty. We are back and we're ready to make some tacos. Sophie's gonna be joining us here in a second. Now, as you saw, we have both hard and soft shell tacos, so all you gotta do is just grab whatever kind of shell you like, Alice, what do you like? And then with all of our so, veggie and meat ingredients. I'm done. Again, we are making um, shrimp tacos today, but you can use any kind of meat. Alex likes mm. pulled pork on his tacos, carnitas, or you could use chicken or beef. You could also add other ingredients like black olives, or sour cream, but today we are sticking with what we've got. So uh, Alex is using a soft shell and so am I. And I'm gonna put on some shrimp. I'm gonna make a soft shell one now. And Wait, nah. Nah, Wait, you're gonna stick see. with hard shell. Alex likes yeah, a lot of shrimp on his. Over yeah, me too. Mayonnaise. I gotta get Here's shrimp. Here's mayonnaise. Gotta get shrimp. And this way everybody can pick the stuff they like and just put that on. Um, and you can add more stuff here. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna add. Do you want some green onion salad? Sure. Green Mom, onion. could you bring my taco over to me? Here you go. Here, how about you come back over here and I'll bring the shrimp over to you, okay? Okay. There you are. 
And I'm going to add, oh, it's black beans. You should try some black beans on there, too. And I'm going to add a little green pepper to mine. I actually am going to put a little bit of everything. I know my children won't. But you got to encourage them to try. Hey, Alex, you want some corn? Nah. It's kind of like, mine's now kind of like a fishy oniony. A fish what? A fishy oniony. A fishy oniony? Shrimp mayonnaise and onions. No cheese? Queso fresco? I'm going to add some queso fresco to mine. I'd add cheese, but I'm here for seafood. Shall I taste it? You know what's really crazy? Ahead, take a taste. My friend Hannah and Ellen don't like anything from the sea. Like, Hannah didn't like any single thing from the sea. Crazy. How is it, Alex? It's good. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of this. Don't have. All right, we're going to finish making up our tacos, and then we'll grab our pasta wraps, and we'll show you everything we made. All right, we're here, we're back, and we're eating our tacos. Sophie's going to be coming back again and joining us. She went and got our pasta wraps. And now you have a couple of great ideas to use veggies with. So we are going to finish eating, and we'll see you next time. Happy, Happy family, family cooking, cooking, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the show today. For more information and recipes, please check us out online at www.twokidscooking.com. Thanks for coming and see you next time. Bye.